So today, as uh, we've been meditating on the series of faith, um, I, while I was going through the Bible, God was bringing me across this verse that faith works through love. Faith works through love. See, we saw that um, last many weeks we've been looking into the subject that faith, the, uh, the series of faith, we saw that the just shall live by faith. What that overcomes the world? The faith that overcomes the world. So if you put both these verses together, it is like for you to have an overcoming life. The just shall live by faith and the faith that overcomes the world. Right? So for you to have an overcoming life in this world, you need faith. So the life is full of challenges, decision making, temptations, and, and so many things that comes across our life. And the way that you overcome the life is by faith. So the faith has to keep growing in our life from one level to another level. Because one level of faith will not be enough to, to face a challenge of a bigger level of problem. That, that's why we saw on the, the faith series on how to increase in faith. So disciples asked Jesus, Lord, increase our faith. If you read, let's read Luke 17, 5. The Lord increase our faith. Right? So they asked him, Lord, probably we are lacking something because Jesus was telling them that we are having less faith. That's why this is not happening. Right? And and so the disciples asked that Lord increase our faith. But Jesus answered and said that increasing faith is not in my hands, it is in your hands. See, God has given us a measure of faith to everybody. Everybody who are saved, a measure of faith is given to them. But Increasing that faith that we have received is in our hands. Hallelujah. See, this is very important. Many times we, like the way that disciples asked, we go to the Lord and say, Lord, increase our faith. God, God cannot increase our faith because it depends on how, how we are putting that faith into action and how we are exercising the faith to increase it ourselves. Amen. God has given us a measure of faith, but increasing the faith is in our hands. That is period. That, that, that has to be settled in our mind. So Jesus said, if you have faith as a mustard seed, then you say to this mountain, and the mountain will be removed and cast into the lake. A little faith or a mustard seed faith, both are small. But then Jesus rebuked the little faith, but Jesus encouraged the mustard seed faith. The mustard seed faith is a faith that keeps growing up. It becomes like a mighty tree. But a little faith is in a state of going down. It will become a, a no faith. It comes to a state of becoming nothingness. Right? So that's why Jesus encouraged us to have a, a mustard seed kind of a faith, but he discouraged us when, he, when we had a little faith. So the reason that I'm kind of a little bit talking about what we have discussed in the past weeks is because today the subject faith grows through love, right? Like it increases through love. The, this subject requires an understanding that our life cannot be stagnant on one level of faith throughout our life. So one level of faith cannot accomplish a greater level of challenge that we have in life. And that's why many people stumble when a, when a difficult situation comes. And then encourages us to have keep on increasing in our faith. And then let's see the life of Judas. Last week we saw how one of the disciples, Judas, who was walking with Christ for three and a half years, suddenly lost faith in Jesus and betrayed Jesus. See, there are many disciples who walked away from Jesus during his ministry, in the middle of the ministry, right? When Jesus was talking something tough and they were not able to understand, and they thought this is hard saying, who will, and many people just left Jesus and they, they pursued Jesus. Basically, they lost faith in Jesus, that they could not follow him anymore. This was not like that. He was walking with Jesus till the last moment Jesus was there on the earth. We can see that Jesus gave authority to the disciples to go and heal the sick and cast out demons and perform many signs and wonders and preach the gospel so that they can come to uh, they can come to the kingdom of God, right? And Judas was one of uh, one of them. And Jesus was revealing the mysteries of the kingdom of God to his close disciples only. Yeah. And the disciples came at Matthew 13, 10 and 11. The disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you. Who, who came? The disciples came. Right? And because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, to others it has not been given. Right? So you can see, Jesus invested in the disciples more by giving them the authority, by giving them the mysteries of the kingdom. His own life he poured out upon them so much. So just think of the experience that Judas is going through. He's receiving the power, he's receiving the authority to heal the sick, right? And then he's uh, listening the, and understanding the mysteries of the kingdom. Then he should be feeling something special. Hey, out of all the other people, Jesus is revealing these things to me. But still, this person has lost faith and went after money. Hallelujah. Now we are going to see about three different disciples. The reason I am saying all these things is 
to bring on the subject of faith right somebody lost faith they were so good they were performing the signs and wonders they were hearing all the great sermons of christ and then they were even receiving the mysteries of kingdom three and a half years suddenly he lost faith and went up to money and betrayed jesus completely it was like a great fall from something very high he suddenly fell to nothing but next now let's come to the life of peter how he is standing in faith last week we saw that um when jesus was asking who do, who the people are saying about me right like who am i right and and peter was so much forthcoming and saying like you are the christ you are the son of the living god right and and jesus was so happy to hear from peter that like wow he really understood uh, about me very well we also see in luke 55 luke 55 but simon answered and said to him master we have toiled all night and caught nothing nevertheless at your word i will let down the net right so here we see that um a fisherman who knows how to fish who knows where the fishes are and he has toiled all night but did not get any fish but then when jesus said now simon cast your net in this place and he did not even ask anything right he said at your word your word is enough for me i will let down the net down not by experience i'm not going to bank on my experience i'm not going to bank on my reasoning i'm just going to do this at your word and we see in the next two uh, verses that when they had done this they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking and they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them and they came and filled the boat both the boats so that they began to sink even after filling both the boats it was it started sinking right so peter just listened to the word the at your word i will let down the net and then it resulted in a great catch that it was even sinking the boat was sinking that much catch was there of the fish so then there was few disciples among the 12 disciples they had even more greater experience with jesus right they were going to the mount of transfiguration where uh, peter james and john they saw jesus shining in his full glory his, his cloth was fully white and they saw uh, elijah and uh, moses coming right great experience right with jesus and then in a, in a in a place where jesus was walking on the water let's read matthew 14 28 to 30 amen if you compare this experience with what peter had on the boat right where when jesus said cast your net in this place and what peter said at your word at your word i'm going to do this right but then here also you command me you he knew that at your word i can do this right he, you command me to come to you on the water and jesus said come right but then he saw a boisterous wind while he was walking on the water he saw the boisterous wind and he was afraid and he started sinking after that here he also he received the word from jesus and he saw success in having a great catch of fish but then now also he is receiving the word but he did not see a full victory in the walk on the water so the faith that he had earlier was not working in this situation you are, you are understanding there was a faith there was a situation uh, at that time also there was a failure for him in fact the whole night he didn't have fish he had a even more a greater uh, failure or not uh, that uh, he, he could not get the victory there but then he believed in god believed in the word of christ and then he put the net and he was able to receive the fish but here jesus said walk on the water but then he saw something else along there probably there was no disturbance he just cast on the cast the net and he got a fish but here the situation is little different where there is some disturbance was happening and then his faith started sinking and what did, what did jesus said in the next verse 31st verse 1431 jesus told peter who showed great faith in the word of jesus earlier in the boat for catching fish he could not have the same faith here and jesus said you have little faith why did you doubt right so it means that there is a bigger level of faith was required during this time than the faith that he had at that time because there was no disturbance at that time just you go and put the net it will come but here he has to walk on the water he has to face a a circumstance a boisterous wind that requires a greater faith that earlier faith was not enough for him to overcome this situation man i wanted you to understand the life of disciples how it was right in judas life in the life of peter right so we can see in the life of peter that one time that his faith was working and another time his faith was not working and then when jesus said among the 12 disciples that one of you will betray me peter was very vehement and said forget about it i'm not going to betray you even if i have to die with you i will die so his faith was so great at that point right because jesus is with him and then he is like having confidence that no i am having great confidence on my faith that i do not betray jesus right but then what happened 
three times he denied Jesus Christ when the situation came. Actual situation came, things was a little different. It was not the way that he was claiming himself to be great at that earlier point. So you can see that Peter's faith was also wobbling. When circumstances are all good, his faith was good. Working, faith is also working. When the circumstances are bad, right? There is a there is a wind, a boisterous wind. When there is a threatening situation, and a servant girl comes and asks, "Hey, you are also one of the, one of Jesus, who are among Jesus," and uh, your speech tells you, he got terrified. Oh, I should escape. I should escape. So at that time, his faith is gone for a toss. He, he even betrayed or denied Jesus at that point. Let's take that word quickly. Matthew twenty six. Um, seventy one. Okay, uh, 70. Just yeah, read 70. Right? And for that, what uh, Peter said, I do not know what you are saying. Right? And then 72nd verse. And then he again denied with an oath, I do not know the man. Right? And then 74th verse, he began to curse and swear. Right? It le went from one level to another level. First he denied, and then he denied uh, knowing the, uh, Jesus Christ, and then he started cursing also. Right? So we see that faith of Peter in all other situations to heal the sick, to deliver the demons, deliver the people from the demons and, and to do signs and wonders, the experience that he had with Jesus on the amount of transfiguration, all those things went for a toss. Just guy, guy mogi. He just, he just went because the situation was different and this situation is different. So you can see that faith level also needs to be different for different different situations amen now i'm coming to the subject of today right like we have seen now there are different levels of faith that you need for handling different situations that's very very clear in the life of judas and peter right so their faith level was not enough to handle a difficult situation right now i'm coming to the subject of faith walking through love let's take galatians 5 6 the second part paul is emphasizing that there is a different different levels of faith, but then there is one thing that is so important that is faith through love. Peter and Judas, they saw the mighty works of Jesus Christ. They were with him and they saw people are being delivered. They clearly saw the power of God working through him. And then there was a faith that was developed in them. Right? Yes, he's good. He's, he's doing great things. And then and then Judas was thinking that okay, if I'm going to stick with Jesus because he has great power, I can also become something. That was his faith. Right? But for Peter, he also saw greater things, but then his faith was not able to carry him forward for the different situation that he's facing in life and he's stumbling there. Right? But then Paul is emphasizing, no, 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 there is a different level of faith that is needed for everyone who are saved. That is faith walking through love. Let's now read John 13, 21 to 25. Now we are seeing about the, the third disciple. Right? Who's this disciple? John. Right? We are seeing about this disciple. Now we want to see what is his lifestyle, how he was. So when Jesus was saying that one of you is going to betray me, every disciple started looking at each other, right? And even in another another uh, uh, gospel, you can see they are asked, "Is it I, Lord? Is it I? Am I the one who is going to betray you?" Right? They even asked, right? That kind of a question that they had, right? But then see the response of John 13:23. Now they was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples, whom Jesus loved. Who is writing about this? John is writing about himself. He had such a great assurance on the love of Jesus. He said, he's, he's dramatically explaining about all this closeness with Jesus Christ. Right? He's saying that, leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved, and Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask who it was of whom he spoke. And then leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, Lord, who is it? Everybody asked, is it I? Is it I? Is it I? They got confused because they were not confident on themselves. But then there is one person who said, I know it is not I. Who is one of these fellows? Who among one of these fellows is going to betray? Right? You see, there are many things that we need to learn from the life of uh, John the Apostle. When, when Jesus is telling like that, suddenly everybody has to be shocked, right? A person leaning on the bosom of Jesus, huh? Who is it? But that is not happening. He's still leaning. Who is it, Lord? I know it is not me. Just understand the picture, right? When Jesus is telling, one of you is going to betray me, everybody has to be shocked. Even the person who is leaning on Jesus' bosom has to be shocked. Lord, who is that? But the Bible says, it was leaning on Jesus' bosom, one of his disciples whom Jesus loved. And then, then 25th verse also is saying, leaning back on Jesus' breast, he said to him, who is it, Lord? Which means that, 
that situation did not even disturb him. He was so assured of the love of Jesus that it will not be him. It will not be him. It will not be him at all. Why? He understood the love of Jesus more and his love for Jesus. He understood his love for them, God's love for them, Christ's love for them, and he also understood about his love for Jesus. So that relationship was so tight and one that he never doubted that he is going to betray Jesus. <laughs> this is the position to which God is asking each and every one of us to come. We can we can experience God, its mighty works, so much power, healing, deliverances, answered prayers. It's all one experience that you have. Right? That you have one kind of faith in Christ. Oh, Jesus can answer the prayers. If you go to that place, Jesus can heal. Right? It's all one level. But then Jesus is saying, that's that was the level even for Judas. But still he fell. That was the level for even Peter. I did many miracles. He had a great fish. So many miracles. But still he denied me. Amen. But then the the assurance of God's love for a person. And then his his the confidence of his love on God also. It is not the only, only one way. He understood God's love and he also was assured or confident about his love towards God. And that's what made John a very special disciple that he was sticking to Christ all the time. And we can see in John 19, 26 and 27. So there is one, one disciple who is with Jesus even when he was on the cross. Right? There was only one disciple. Peter is nowhere in the scene, probably he was following up, probably at a distance. If we go near, we will also be hanging on the cross, so better let me stay away for some time. Right? And all other disciples are nowhere in the picture, they all left, they all ran away. But there was only one disciple who was near the cross, where the mother and the disciple was there, and then Jesus had the, uh, the final uh, commitment that he needs to finish. Probably his earthly father was already dead, right? And if the mother, who is going to take care? So he has to kind of complete that responsibility. And he couldn't find any other disciples who were close with him. There was only one disciple. And still the way that John says is, uh, his mother and the disciples whom he loved, 26 the verse. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, he is writing about himself. He had the assurance of, Jesus loved me so much. And I have my confidence in the love towards God. That made the disciple to not run away when a difficult situation comes. Right? This is so important. If you see the life of Judas, Peter and John, it tells something that when difficult situation comes, who is going to stand with Christ? Who is going to not forsake Christ? It's so important. Right? And it all applies to us. God might do great miracles, signs and wonders. Right? But are we still going to stick with Jesus even to the last moment? That's the question. 1 John 4.16 1 John 4.16 well, and we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love. 1 John, 1 John 4 16. And we have known and believed that love that God has for us. God is love. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. Amen. Hallelujah. So we need to know that the, the, the disciple was telling, the disciple was 1 John 4 16. Not John 4 16. 1 John 4 16. And, and, and this disciple is writing that. God is love. And we have believed that the love that God has for us. So you believe the love that God has for you. You need to believe. You need to understand that God is love. And he loves you so much. And that assurance has to be so deeply rooted in your heart. That will enable you to have greater faith in God. Amen. And he who abides in love abides in God and God in him. So he's saying that you have to abide. You have to be one in God through love. And the love is the one which will hold you stronger till the end. Now, faith works through love. Right? That's a, the that's a subject. How does love, this love relationship is turning into faith in many situations? Just think of a son wanted a cycle from his father. The children asked. And then, if the, and he went and he told the father and then uh, he went and told all his friends that my father is going to get the cycle, I am going to have this. After this time, he is so joyful about it. And he is waiting for the day that the cycle to come. Okay. But on the day that he was expecting the cycle to come, it did not come. So what will be the reaction of us if, if that was the case? Right? You, you built so much expectation and then it didn't happen at the time. First thing is, we we'll go and fight with our father. Right? You said you will give. I went and told all my friends. 
I was waiting for this. What happened? Why you did not give me? Right? Or the mode of our approach itself would be that I understood, I believe in your power that you can get things done, but you didn't get things done. What is happening? But a son who truly understood the father through love, he will first reason out, my father has always been good. He has done so many things in my life. If he has not got this at this time, there could be some reason behind it. Financial reason, there could be some other reason because of which uh, the cycle did not come at the time. But I'm not going to doubt my father's character. I'm just going to wait till he provides. The understanding that my father is good, he never withholds anything good from me. If he, something has not happened in my life, it, there might be some reason and I'm fine with it. And I will not doubt my father. God is asking us to come to that level. Right? Many times you believe that God is powerful, powerful. You should get this thing done by this time. I believe I have faith. I'll get this done. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. But then God is saying, there's no love in this. You just understand my power. You understand my ability. That's good. Okay, good. But then you come to an understanding of a deeper love. Who am I? Who am I? I'm really good. I want to do the right thing at the right time. Come to that understanding that will keep you at peace. Even when things are not happening at the time that you're thinking. God is saying that, come to that kind of a love understanding and put faith in me that I'm still good, I will do the right thing at the right time, still believe in me. This is the level God wanted us to have. If we don't mature into this level, always God is always like your ATM machine, you pray, pray, pray and you get things done. That will not stand, you will become like Judas one day. One day, tough situation will come. Sorry, now no more Jesus will work, I let me sell him for 30 pieces of silver and make money and go. But then when we grow to the level of the love relationship like John, no matter what. <laughs> he was saying like, who is it Lord? I know, you love me, I love you so much. I would never betray you in these situations. God is saying, come to that love relationship. Come to that faith that works through love. Here the faith is not getting things done. The faith is on the person. It is, the faith is not on the, the cycle. The faith is on the person. That is the real faith. And God is asking us, come to that faith. Amen. This is the faith growing to a higher level. Well, the faith based on God's love. The faith that is based on the assurance of God's love towards you and your love towards God. You have such an assurance that everything will work out right at the right time. I believe in God. Amen. That's the level God is asking us to rise up to. You can see this as a parable uh, or not, as a real incident that happened uh, in the life of Jesus in Luke 7, 36-39. Amen. So here we see a woman uh, from the city who was, a, who was called as a sinner in this place, right? And she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house and she brought a fragrant oil, which was very costly, right? Some some people, I think in one of the things it said is one year worth of uh, wages, right? So she broke it and then um, she anointed Jesus and she washed his feet with her tears, right? And she poured out his, her love towards Jesus in his place. We can see here a devotion, a, a godly devotion and a love being poured out by this woman. Not even any of the disciples, even Jesus washed disciples' feet. No, no, we never read that disciples washed Jesus' feet. But here we see that this woman washed his feet right, and showed her love more. And, and, and we can see that Jesus was moved with that love that she poured out on, her, on him. And Jesus explained to the Pharisee in 44 uh, to 48. Well, so Jesus was reasoning with Pharisee and then he compared the treatment of Pharisee to him compared with this woman. And then he said, to, uh, Therefore I said to you, uh, 47th verse, Her sins which are many are forgiven, for she loved much. She loved much. Amen. And then we see Jesus forgiving her because she loved much. So Jesus is telling that she loved much, but then read 50th verse. Read 50th verse. He, Jesus considered the love that this woman showed as faith. What is faith here? She did not even receive anything from Jesus, like the miracles or uh, uh, raising from the dead or nothing. She just showed love. That's it. But then, because she showed more love, Jesus himself with a full heart and said, your sins are forgiven. And he said, this love that you showed is nothing but it's faith. Your faith. The love that is based on faith. Right? The love that is displayed, that the love that is coming is actually nothing but faith. The faith, that's what the, the message is all about today. The faith that works through love. How much you know God, how much you love God, and how much you are assured of your relationship with God, how much you are assured of your love towards God. 
through that faith comes and that faith will make you to stand strong at any situation it will not be shaken it will never never be shaken even in the time of death amen peter saw my life is at jeopardy i will run right he saw it told so much earlier but then when a situation come he ran but then when you have that kind of relationship with christ even when you come to the street there are, you just go and read about many disciples who just gave their life they could have just said one word i deny jesus that's it that's what they wanted they said it's worthless to tell this i will never deny my christ and they gave their head their head was chopped because they they understood the love of god so so clearly that even death could not separate them from god's love and that's the reason once jesus rose from the dead there was one disciple who has to be changed who is peter right and jesus went to peter in john 21:15 to 17 read john 21:15 to 17 so jesus uh, peter denied jesus three times and jesus went and asked peter three times do you love me he wanted peter to understand the problem is not that you had great experience and the problem is your love is not full your love is shaky you do not know me fully and three times jesus asked do you love me do you love me do you love me right today jesus asks us when we are asking god lord do me this one that one and jesus asked do you really love me do you really love me are you seeking me for what i can do for you are you seeking me for some blessing but do you really love me if this question is asked is our answer going to be genuine yeah we might say yeah i love jesus but when a situation comes forsake him save my life save my skin save my pride save my ego we we can see we can be so comfortable when things are all good right yeah, i love jesus and i worship him through good things but when situation comes are we still loving jesus and when jesus comes and asks do you still love me do you still love me he, he went after his own job he went after fishing and jesus asked him, do you love me more than this do you love me more than this do you love me more than this and if you can say yes lord i love you more than this more than my job more than my family more than my own whatever i love you more than then we will stand for god during tough situations in life we will stand for christ we will not betray jesus like for 30 pieces of silver see life will throw situations at us don't think that everything will be cozy and better process situations will come but at that time how we are standing for christ is so important so let us not seek god for the sake of something he will do for me that i will get this i will get this prayer answered i i believe him in his power it's all good right but then let's seek god for him for his love that is so good he is faithful and everything that is in my life all things will work together for good for those who love the lord that's what bible says all things will work out together for good god is so powerful and great and also loving that he makes every crooked situations of your life for your own good you will turn it and at the end of life when you see these things happen for my good and i know for my good and all things will work together for good for those who love the lord so let me love god let me seek him for him not for that what i can receive from his hand right that's the approach of israelites who fell from faith that's the approach of judas who fell from faith right with so much grieving heart i tell the many people who came to this church who received tremendous blessing amazing miracles happened but i tell you the grieving heart they are no more in faith they received they received answers from god but i perceive today where are they they are completely lost in the world so prayer answering is good but knowing him loving him that is what will make you to stay till the last breath of your life to be faithful to god to be to be loyal to god till the last breath will happen only only if you know his love if you understand his love and you show your love to him so today god is asking do you love me then all these things that you are seeking from me do you love me god is a loving father he will definitely answer your prayer god is so good we we don't need to doubt his love we don't need to doubt his Uh, goodness he will definitely answer our prayers but then after our prayers are answered the greatest test will come after our prayers are answered whether we are still going to follow god i'll say okay i've got my answer i've got my done thing done okay let me go on okay 
right? The greatest test will come when all your prayers are answered, but still you seek God, you still thank God, you still being loyal and faithful to God, and that is when it will really show that how much you love God. The only best way for you to grow in your faith, walk with God, is by loving God more and more and more. Okay? And that love will push you to pray, that love will push you to worship, that love will push you to read the word, that, that love will make you to know God more. All those things, the driven, driving factor for that would be, the foundation would be God's love, should be God's love. It should not be, if you're thinking that, oh, I need to read the word, I need to pray, let me do it. You will do it for me. After that, but if you are having love, you know, you tasted his love, you understood his love, no matter what, you will pray. Because, you, are, you see, once you tasted love, you want more, you want that love more. And, and that will lead you to pray more. That will lead you to worship more. That will lead you to read the word more. That's how you keep growing in faith. That's it's a it's a mutual thing. The love increases, the faith increases. The love increases, the faith increases. Right? It's just a, a cycle. Right? So today God is asking, come, and and I want you to love me more because I have loved you first. Bible says that I have loved you first. It's not that we love God. Bible says that He loved us first, and then we love God. Right? With this verse will close. One John four nineteen. One John four nineteen. Yeah, I'm telling you. You are very selfish. You love us first, then you will think of loving you back. God is fine with it. Right? God is fine with that. As far as you come into my love relationship, I am ready to pour. Right? Somebody said like this. There's two greatest gift God had. One is God the Son and God the Spirit. He gave both of them for the humanity. The Son came and died on the cross, giving his, shedding his last drop of blood. And the Spirit of God was given as a promise to the humanity. So that we can be reconciled back to God. The greatest of two gifts Father could have give is given to us. So He showed love first. He gave that first, and God is saying, "Now you respond back, love me." And even for for what purpose He was asking us to love us, so that we will be benefited. Ultimately, it is not for Him. He has so many angels who can worship and and, and do that. But if we love Him back, we will be secure. We will be safeguarded from all the wicked things of this world. There are so many things that are deceiving. The enemy wants to take us away from. God is saying the best way that you are protected is you stay in my love. You stay in my love. Right? That is for our protection. God is not saying that you love me so that I get something. No. It's for us. It's for us, for our benefit. So God is saying, love me back. Come back to that relationship. Come back to that love relationship. And through that, the faith will increase. And through that faith, you will see greater things being done in your life. Because for greater things to be done, you need greater faith. Without greater faith, you cannot get things done for your life. Amen. So let's love the Lord. Let's grow in faith. And then God has promised greater things for us this year. And my our prayer, our prayer is that God let the church know you more. Let the church understand you more. Let the church love you more. Through that, things will automatically happen. We don't even need to pray for you. When you come into that kind of relationship, God is so pleased to do things for you. Right? What God is saying that, come closer to me. Not just as one group come individually also, right? One, one as a group you come on Sunday, that's fine. But then every day, every day you build your relationship with me, build your love relationship with me. We see that life of that woman. I don't think that woman would have been the same after that. Do you think that she would have gone back to the same sin, sinful life? One word of Jesus, sins are forgiven. Your faith has saved you. That one word is enough. She would have become an evangelist or a great apostle. You know, right? That is what will change her life. If you are struggling in, in some, some kind of sinful habits in our life, God is saying, come to me, show love. And then I give you grace, I give you power to overcome the daily of sin. Otherwise, like if you are trying to do your seven habits of how to overcome, nothing will work. The love of God, the love of God, His word will help you to overcome sin. That is the greatest of power. We just leave that one and we run after so many other techniques. Those techniques will not work. Come back to the love relationship of, of God. And that is what will make you overcome uh, from everything. That is that you're going through in your life. That every struggle, every temptation, every sinful habit, everything will go away only when you come to the deeper love relationship with God.